you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck sev reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2020 volvo xc40 courtesy of younger volvo in hagerstown maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below wanted to check out this one this is volvo's entry level suv into the volvo family iihs top safety pick few new changes for 2020 all of these reasons being why i wanted to check this one out today so what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trip levels for the 2020 XC40. First one being the T4 front wheel drive momentum starting at $33,700. T4 front wheel drive R design for $39,950. T4 front wheel drive inscription for $40,450. Then you have the T5 all wheel drive momentum, actually the one we have today, starting at $35,700. T5 all wheel drive R design for $41,950. And the T5 all wheel drive inscription for $40,000. $42,450. And so, as you can imagine, there are actually two different engine configurations, one of them belonging to the T4, the other belonging to the T5. So I'll start with the T4, although that's not the one we have today. The T4 is powered by a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, putting out 187 horsepower at 4,700 RPM, 221 pound-feet of torque available at 4,000 RPM, power sent to the front wheels, like I was saying, through an eight-speed automatic, zero to 60 on that one, approximately 7.8 seconds. MPG numbers 23 in the city, 33 highway. Premium fuel is recommended. However, regular fuel is okay. But so then there is the other engine configuration belonging to the T5 trim levels and the one we have today. This one is going to be a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder once again, but this time putting out 248 horsepower, 5,500 RPM, 258 pound feet of torque available at 4,800 RPM. Power sent to all wheels. This is the all wheel drive configuration engine with the eight speed automatic once again zero to 60 approximately 6.7 seconds we will give it a little acceleration later so we'll see what that actually feels like mpg numbers coming in at 22 in the city 30 highway again taking premium unleaded fuel and so before we do that acceleration i did want to mention there are some drive modes of course for the xc40 drive mode button is going to be located just below the infotainment screen it is one of the seven or eight buttons included in the xc40 a very minimalist design which i love but anyways drive modes are going to include comfort, eco, dynamic, and off-road, adjusting things like the shift points, the steering sensitivity, braking, suspension, and the climate control settings actually as well. So quite a bit being adjusted with those driving modes. It's kind of cool. But anyways, I do currently have it in that dynamic driving mode, which is the fun one essentially, holding the RPMs a little higher. So we are prepared now to do that acceleration. What do you guys say? Let's find a straightaway and let's see how quickly we can get the new 2020 Volvo XC40 T five up to speed all right you guys pulling out onto the road let's see whoa <laughs> it's the ghost wow okay certainly no issues with marching onto the highway i think what surprised me the most was the initial punch like a lot of times you think with turbocharged engines there's going to be a little bit of turbo lag a little bit of delay when you first hit the gas but there was none there was no turbo lag whatsoever with the xc40 which is brilliant Instant acceleration instantly merges you onto the highway. No issues with acceleration whatsoever, at least with the T5. I can't vouch for the T4 because I'm not driving it, but the T5 is wonderful. But anyways, one thing in addition to that, if you're wondering about paddle shifters, you can get them, but they do come with the R-Line trim level only, so therefore we're not gonna have them today. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 13.6 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.9 inch solid rear discs. Oh, by the way, that braking setup goes for either engine configuration it's going to be the same either way braking feels been perfectly fine for me today so absolutely no issues there it feels wonderful touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a double wishbone type front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension and i did want to mention there is an optional package it's called the 4c suspension that goes for one thousand dollars but that essentially is just your adaptive damping suspension which is usually an option i'd like to recommend because that essentially does give you the best of both worlds because it monitors each shock absorber individually. So it's not only gonna give you a smoother ride, but when you're going around the turns a little faster, it's gonna tighten up that suspension for better handling as well. So therefore, that's definitely an option I typically do like to recommend. So anyways, ultimately when it comes to ride quality, it's been perfectly fine for me today. Although 
in Maryland, we do have some pretty smooth roads here, I will say, compared to where I live in Pennsylvania. So perfectly fine for me there. As far as cabin noise goes, you guys could probably tell there isn't a whole lot coming into the cabin here. Even cruising at 55 miles per hour right now, there isn't a whole lot of cabin noise. So Volvo did a pretty good job with the XC40 when it comes to cabin noise. I'm kind of impressed there, actually. A lot of times with smaller SUVs, you do get a little more cabin noise than expected. But honestly, with the XC40 even going over a bridge right now, it's really not that bad. So perfectly fine for me. Steering feel is brilliant. Not the heaviest thing in the world like my Mustang, but steering feel is plenty nice. Definitely a nice weight to it, at least in that sport driving mode that I currently have it in. So no complaints from me there either. And when it comes to visibility, I actually can see perfectly fine out the back. So actually visibility is one of the better ones I've seen lately. That's really good. Absolutely no issues whatsoever with visibility. So I think it's due to the shape. A lot of times with boxier SUVs, when it comes to the back of it, at least you are going to get better visibility. And that is certainly the case in the XC40. So wonderful visibility in this one. And so, but to go along with that included with visibility, really rain sensing windshield wipers do also come standard on the XC40, regardless of which trim level that you go with. That's always nice. Essentially what that means is whenever the XC40 detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. So it's kind of like automatic headlights. It's just one less thing you have to worry about when you're driving. So that's a big old plus there too. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2020 Volvo XC40. All right, so here she is, you guys, the 2020 Volvo XC40 finished in Fusion Red. In case anybody was curious about that exterior color name. Let's go ahead and start up front on this one. LED headlights with Thor's Hammer LED daytime running lights. A typical Volvo fashion coming standard on this one. That does come with the automatic feature, by the way, for both low and high beams. A lot of times it'll only come standard with the low beams, but on the XC40, high beams are included. So that's pretty cool. Full LED headlights with active of bending come part of the advanced package that's a $1,400 option by the way but active bending essentially is when you're going around the bend at night those headlights will swivel based on your steering angle better help illuminating what is around that bend so you're less likely to hit a deer or any other objects basically led fog lights also coming standard aluminum accents on the bottom portion of that front bumper that is going to come standard on this one and the grille is actually going to differ amongst the trim levels for example if you go with the momentum trim level you will get black vertical slats within that front grille if you were to go with the inscription you're going to get chrome vertical slats and the r design is going to give you a black block style front grille so they are going to differ substantially amongst the trim levels i guess that's a good way of telling the difference between the trim levels i suppose so let's take a look at the front grille but anyways let's go ahead and swing around to the side on this one silver roof rails coming with the momentum and the inscription trims black roof rails with the r design of course rear privacy glass coming standard across the board and when it comes to the window surrounds, you will get black window surrounds with the momentum and the R line. However, you will get chrome belt line molding if you were to go with the inscription trim level. Then take a look at the side mirrors. They are body colored power adjustable side mirrors for the momentum and inscription trim levels. Gloss black side mirrors with the R design. And either way, they will be heated with integrated turd signals across the board. So that's always nice. Then take a look down at the wheel setup. 18 inch five spoke silver alloys coming with the momentum. 18 inch six spoke diamond cut alloys with the inscription. And lastly, 19 inch double five spoke alloys. If you were to go with the R design of the XC40, but now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the XC40. I can already see it up top. Shark fin antenna coming standard across the board. Rear spoiler with an integrated brake light coming standard just below that rear window wiper. Also that Volvo lettering spelled out horizontally. I've always liked that look. Trim level badging back there, but just below it all, when it comes to the exhaust setup, it is gonna differ quite substantially amongst the trim levels. Let me see if I can even show you guys down here. Dual exhaust outlets hidden if you were to go with the momentum. So obviously that's what you're looking at right now. However, dual exhaust outlets integrated into the rear bumper with chrome tips. If you were to go with the R design or inscription, but nonetheless, as always, you guys know what we have to do next. Here is that exhaust clip. And 
And so now since we are around back when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a power lift gate by the way. I did want to start by mentioning that. It can be a hands-free lift gate if you go with the premium package. It goes for $1,900, but if not, all of your buttons on the key fob, there's actually a button to pop that rear lift gate on the side. All the buttons are on the side of the key fob. And there's also a button on the lift gate itself. You just simply press it. You don't have to actually pull up on it. Just press it, it's gonna open up itself. And then you press another button to actually close the lift gate. It's pretty convenient back there. Once opened up behind that second row, cargo capacity comes in at 20.7 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, however, you can fold that second row down, bumping it up to 47.2 cubic feet. And by the way, that is a 60-40 split. And you can also find some cargo lighting back there. There is some in-floor storage and a 12 volt power outlet actually as well. And make our way up to the rear legroom. That is going to come in at 36.1 inches. So for reference, I'm at even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Rear passengers also have a rear center armrest with cup holders. There is a 12 volt power outlet, a little bit of storage space, and you have some coat hooks located on the ceiling if there weren't any rear passengers back there as well. But now make your way up to the front seats. Eight way power adjustable driver's seat with power lumbar comes standard. And that does come with memory settings, by the way, for up to two different drivers. That can be found on the driver's side door there but now one of the main changes for the 2020 xc40 is going to be the cloth leather combination for the momentum that is going to be a 2020 specific change right there so although we do have optional full leather seating today so i can't really show it to you guys but that is probably the main change for 2020 XC40. Although I will say if you go with the R design or the inscription trims, that is gonna give you full leather seating as well. Heated front seats are available for $750. That comes with a heated steering wheel as well. Yet another option that we do indeed have here today. Overall, the seats have been plenty comfortable for me, so certainly no issues there. And of course, you got the flag of Sweden found on the side of the passenger side seat there. So I always like that they put their flag there. It kind of makes this car a little bit extra special driving it. But anyways, now let's take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped across the board. And if you wanted a heated steering wheel, like I was saying, that is optional, but it is available for you there if you wanted it. And take a look at the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Volvo logo on the one side, absolutely nothing on the other. And again, all of your buttons are actually located on the side of the key, including lock, unlock that button to pop the rear hatch. And on the other side, you have your panic button. But all I'm going to do, it is all keyless entry. Just simply leave the key in your pocket. Put your foot on the brake. There is an engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there. And I should mention, before we get to the gauges, this transmission setup is a little bit different from some of the other manufacturers you simply just slide the shifter back that puts you in neutral slide it back again that puts you in drive slide it forward that puts you in reverse and park is actually going to be a button just behind the shifter there so then you got your parking brake button of course as well so don't get them confused but anyways let's now get to the gauges here 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster coming standard absolutely freaking love that looks absolutely amazing up there to control what is on that digital display there are a couple buttons on the actual steering wheel on the right side you of course check out different things using that but how many miles you have left until you hit empty it gives you your speed limit recognition technology up there as well digital speedometer tachometers on your right time of the day outside temperature your basics basically but it looks absolutely wonderful up there i will say that and it will actually adjust ever so slightly depending upon the driving mode that you put it in like for instance off-road is going to give you a compass at the bottom i found that pretty cool and the eco driving mode is also going to give you some green hues as well so overall very cool digital gauge setup to take a look at overall interior quality though panoramic moonroof that we have today that goes for $1,475 if you wanted that charcoal headliner goes for $200 universal garage door openers you can get them with the premium package but that can be found underneath the frameless rear view mirror I always like frameless rear view mirrors but it's up to three different garage doors on the bottom of that there wireless phone charger though also coming standard with that premium package there is also a convenience package I wanted to mention now $600 but that gives you a storage box under the driver's seat cushion that's kind of unheard of you usually don't find something like that but i think that's super cool also it gives you automatic climate control and a power front passenger seat as well and some other things but you can also find driftwood inlays if you were to go with the inscription trim level so therefore we don't have them today but we do have this silver trim inlay which is actually kind of cool it feels pretty heavy duty has a nice design to it and overall a very simplistic design to the xc40 and really that's kind of their thing simplicity so you have a total of like eight buttons found just below the tech display and that's really where you can control everything the tech display but just below that 12 volt power outlet usb charging 
charging ports times two it looks like there then you got your wireless phone charger a little bit of storage to the side there also a little more storage that opens up right in front of that that's pretty cool dual cup holders you got a little more storage just behind that and within the center armrest you have plenty more storage there as well so overall very nice interior quality very simplistic interior quality which i actually like but now let's make our way to the tech display I keep mentioning nine inch color touchscreen display comes standard on this one bluetooth and audio streaming also standard android auto apple carplay factory navigation system is available although you don't need it if you have a smartphone because the android auto apple carplay but the factory navigation system is available with the multimedia package that goes for $1,850 and actually comes with a Harman Kardon sound system as well but speaking of when it comes to the sound system eight speakers with 250 watts is the standard setup that we have today however like I said there is that optional Harman Kardon sound system that comes with 13 speakers and 600 watts that is going to be there for you too if you wanted it but again we don't have that one today so what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and Let's test out the clarity of this one. Sound system is actually perfectly fine for the XC40. Bass is pretty good, clarity is fine. Again, this isn't that large of an SUV, so really for the XC40, that standard sound system is fine. Harman Kardon, of course, is gonna be better. Bowers and Wilkins being the very best sound system I've ever experienced. I believe it was actually a Volvo S90 that I experienced that in. That was the best I've ever heard out of the 500 reviews I've done so far. But really, with this sound system, it's perfectly fine for the XC40. But Last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display at least is when you do put the XC40 in reverse, you of course will find a rear view camera with dynamic grid lines letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. So first thing I wanted to mention, like I was saying at the beginning of the video, the XC40 is an IIHS top safety pick, which really says it all right there. Front side, side curtain airbags come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Real child door locks, also standard tire pressure monitoring system. Also some of the advanced safety features that come standard include lane keep assist with oncoming lane mitigation, speed limit recognition, driver attention monitor, and a runoff road mitigation system. However, there is a premium package that actually adds some safety as well that goes for $1,900. That includes a blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert, front and rear park assist or the parking sensors essentially, and auto dimming exterior mirrors. That's something that usually comes with the auto dimming rear view mirror, but the exterior mirrors usually is an option. So that's pretty cool that that's there as well. But overall, when it comes to my final thoughts of the XC40, I love this simplistic interior design, including the 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster. Absolutely love that as well. Exterior design is very much so on point. Love that. Safety is great. Top safety pick, of course, with IIHS. For me, the question comes down to with the XC40 XC40, given its size, is it worth $40,000? And really, it's a luxury compact SUV. So if you're looking for more luxury with a simplistic design, digital gauge cluster, plenty of acceleration in this thing, it might be. But having said that, you can get three row SUVs for around the same price. So let me know in the comment section below if you think it's worth $40,000. It really is a very nice SUV. But Having said that, that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there. If you like, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. If you're into new car reviews, that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.